Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepizani. Here are your top stories this Tuesday. Over 30 Kenyan police officers have been shot dead by heavily armed cattle wrestlers in the north of the country. There are differing figures being reported, but a police spokesman confirmed it is easily the worst single attack on Kenyan police in living memory. The fallen officers were part of an operation to recover cattle belonging to the Samburu tribe that had been stolen by the Takana tribe. The officers were ambushed by the Takana tribe while in a valley, leaving many casualties. Osman Wolfer, the provincial commissioner for the Rift Valley, told Reuters that the attackers had sophisticated weapons, including machine guns. At least $2 billion worth of diamonds have been stolen from Zimbabwe, according to a new report by campaign group Partnership Africa Canada. The report describes the situation as the biggest plunder of diamonds since the time of British colonial mining magnet Cecil Rhodes. The RIP What You Saw report was released to coincide with Zimbabwe's government's conference on diamond trade at Victoria Falls. The head of the Zimbabwe mining development company, Goodwill Masimarembwe, said that the allegations were totally false. In his address to delegates, President Robert Mugabe said that the government was committed to observing international laws on diamond mining, storage and trading. Popular ZFM DJ Tunopona Mapereke Kasende was brutally assaulted over the weekend. The former Studio 263 actress, also known as Tintin, was left with a swollen face. She claimed that her boyfriend Brian beat her up when she asked him to help with home chores. It has since emerged that the socialite had been behaving badly at the Zimbabwe Cricket National Awards, upsetting attendees. Tintin claimed she is now part of an alarming and over-increasing group of women that are victims uh, of violence and this has given her an opportunity to speak out. This story comes against a worrying backdrop of domestic cases in Zimbabwe. Here to tell us more is Liam. That's right, Charity. And the case that we've looked at on today's ATV News of DJ Tintin is by far and away not the only case of domestic violence in Zimbabwe. This really is a growing problem. Back earlier this year, there was a survey released by Zimbabwe National Statistics Agency with some rather alarming figures about domestic violence in Zimbabwe as a whole. Just to give you a, a few of those figures, we've got 30% of women who have experienced some form of physical violence since the age of 15. And of these women, 18% have suffered it in the past 12 months. Another statistic here, 22% of women who have had sexual intercourse claim that for the first time that happened, it was against their will. Another one, 27% of those interviewed said that they've experienced sexual violence and 9 out of 10 of these cases, the act was done by a partner, which just shows to highlight the real problem with domestic violence in Zimbabwe. Perhaps one of the key issues, as so often is in these cases, is that only 30% of the women interviewed in this study sought help. Quite often too scared to seek help, embarrassed, whatever it may be, but that's one of the key issues. It's also one of the key issues that friend of ATV, Nigel Magamu, will seek to be addressing in his Twitter-based social media chat, 263 chat. We spoke to Nigel last week about his various topics discussed on the 263 chat, and today it fits in quite nicely with what we're talking about today, which is domestic violence, arguably the most challenging subject yet for Nigel to moderate on his Twitter-based chat. Nigel, very kindly, is going to join us here from Harare to tell us about his views on domestic violence and how he plans to address them in the 263 chat forum. Thanks again for joining us, Nigel. So let's just start with domestic violence as a whole. What are your views on it? How big a problem is it in Zimbabwe? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem that hasn't, that isn't really being addressed. Um, you know, you know. Of course, I read the article and um, you know, all the stats that, that that come along with it. But remember something: these are the stats that that are being made up by people who are actually owning up and saying this is actually what's going on. You know, never mind the people who are actually being abused um, and not reporting it. 
you know so that's what my main concern is and, and what, I, what I found with just by talking to people and even just preparing for this uh, 263 chat on um, domestic violence is that a lot of people are experiencing it and not sharing the story so that's what really concerns me so I look at these stats and the stats are worrying um, but then if I, I then wonder how much how large the figure would be if everyone were to come along and, and actually um, um, admit that they were actually being um, abused at home. As you've said there, Nigel, a lot of people don't seek help for this problem. How can that situation be improved? Well, the, the thing is, I, I feel that um, we need to, to talk about it. I mean, I think talking about it is the first thing. So what what Tintin did was to, you know, and she's a you know high, she's a a personality, um, obviously radio, uh, radio DJ and. Um, um, you know, um, an actress, and so by her, by someone like that coming out and saying, "Look, this is actually what happened to me," and and sharing her story, it, it, you know, it, it you know it empowers other people who who probably gone through the same similar situation or are currently going through it to also come out and say, "Okay, you know what? If she can do it, then I can do it too." You know, um, I think the other thing as well that we mustn't forget is domestic violence is happening on both sides, so both men and women are being. Uh, attacked and you know the story both sides of the story need to be told you know this is quite a difficult and potentially inflammatory discussion topic will it take all your moderating expertise yeah today is going to be a big challenge uh, today's going to be a big challenge because I'm going to have to police and you know really direct the conversation towards you know guys this is about solutions um, you know do you do you have any suggestions on the solutions and what we can actually do? Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to vent. Um, some of them have already started. Some of them have been venting since yesterday. So it's good to vent, but that's only 25% of the problem. You know, let's really focus on the 75% of the, this particular problem, which is the solutions. How can we get people to talk, talk about domestic violence openly? who can actually assist them, and what can be done afterwards. That's really what this is about. Would you say this is the most challenging subject that you've covered in 263 Chat to this date? This is, yes. This, I, the thing is, every week um, you think, well, this is, we're, 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 we're tackling new territory and uh, this is going to be really hard. And, but yeah, for sure, today is going to be the most difficult conversation to have. Um, but I think it's a must you know, have conversations. We need to have this. There's no point in sweeping issues like this under the rug. In 2006, the Domestic Violence Act came into play in Zimbabwe. Surely this can't be regarded as a success when you look at the statistics today. No, no, it can't. Um, no, it can't. It, it, it can't at all. I think, and that's what's sad. That's what's really sad about this. I think, you know, in, in as much as we can enable certain acts to, you know, like, like like this particular one. I think that the, the big the big big basic issue here is information. You know, people just don't have information about what to do when this sort of um, situation occurs. You know, people need to feel like if they go to the police and they report this kind of case, that something will actually be done about it. Thanks again for joining us, Nigel, and good luck with the important discussion this evening. other Zimbabwe news, over 200 colleges and private schools have been shut down as the government cracks down on law education standards. The, high, the Higher and Terrestrial Education Ministry confirmed that the, some institutions were performing illegally and employing unqualified teachers. The Education Ministry said they will continue with the closures around the country until they're satisfied all private institutions are offering quality education and training. Dynamo's FC founding member Richard Chamia has died at the age of 79. Chamiya, chairman of the board of directors, was part of the group of black players who broke away from the white-dominated Salisbury City and Salisbury United football clubs to form Dynamos, which later became the most popular team in Zimbabwe. Chamiya's death comes as Dynamos are at the verge of making history of winning their second consecutive league and cup double. 
Dynamo's chairman, Kenny Mabaiwa, said that the team would never be the same without the man they called White Hair, and his loss has deprived the club of a father who once held the team together in time of crisis. In the arts, a new play called Wusiku is to have a short run at theatre in the park in Harare from the 20th to the 24th of November. The play comes from Stanley Makuwe, who wrote the popular production The Coup, which also fe featured a theatre in the park back in February. Wusiku is a tragic tale of a young soldier who murders his unfaithful wife before taking his own life. Here to tell us more is Leslie Moyo from Theatre in the Park, who joins us from Harare. So Leslie, could you tell us a bit more about this play? Uh, Wusiku is a play which was written by a Zimbabwean playwright who is based in New Zealand, Stanley Maku. It premiered in Harare at the Protest Arts International Festival and now comes to Theatre in the Park for a short run from November 20 to November 24. Basically, it's a story of, uh, that uh, highlights issues of, of uh, social exploitation and where we're looking at, at how the people who are in power or, or those who have high status in society are exploiting or ma manipulating the poor. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a story, a simple story of a, of a young soldier uh, who, who is married and has a beautiful wife, but then is the, the boss... Um, uh, uh, falls in love with uh, with Wusiku's wife, and so manipulate um, Wusiku and, and takes him out of the place so that he can uh, sleep with uh, his wife. And so there are so many issues that are raised: uh, issues like uh, issues of betrayal, issues of uh, exploitation, and uh, and and basically how society is 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 not balanced in terms of of, of class. Today we've been looking at domestic violence and the story of this play touches on that theme as well, doesn't it? Yes, I think it does because I think it's one of uh, the typical issues uh, currently in Zimbabwe and also now that we are also leading to the 16 days of gender and activism. Uh, I, I believe that it, 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 it also highlights how how, how how people also like how men because they are they are physically strong and women would also want to to impose their their uh, their authority on women and, and instead of 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 resolving such issues in a in a in a in a, in a way that would would, would 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 bring out a positive result for, for both parties. But then in this case also we see that uh, we see couldn't face that uh, the news that uh, his wife had uh, slept with another man. So. He thought uh, the, the, the solution was to kill it, but yet uh, people can uh, resolve uh, such issues in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way than other than uh, major. So I believe that it, it, it's quite a pertinent and uh, uh, very re relevant uh, play at this at the time of the year. And finally, Leslie, how are people in Zimbabwe responding to theatre productions as a whole? I would say it's, it's, it's popular because uh, it, it offers people uh, that opportunity to, to express uh, themselves, like, uh, and also to to, to kind of uh, give people uh, a picture of what of what's happening in in, in, in our country. Because uh, most people are maybe because of our repressive laws, most people are not open uh, to talk about uh, such issues and. And, 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 I, and I think uh, theatre is offering that space that, that where they can come in and consume a project that really uh, speaks out issues that they are. And, uh, and, I, 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 and I find that people are, are warming up to, to such kind of plays which are, are looking at, 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 at the theatre score in our country and, and, I, and, and, and they're enjoying it because they, 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 they really bring out issues that, most, that people in any other space might not want uh, to discuss freely. So I, I believe that uh, theatre is really playing a major role. Yeah. Our picture of the day is of this lovely young boy in his ATV cap. The sender did not give us their name, so we'll just call him Mr. ATV. Keep sending us your pictures and you could be on the big screen just like Mr. ATV. Thank you for watching and have a good evening.